This is Chapter 5, Lesson 1, Count Control Structures. Let's just do a quick review about control structures. We've been using them for the last few chapters. Remember that control structures are built-in programming statements that come in Alice. They allow you to control the order instructions are executed. Here are some examples of control structures you have been using. We have used do in order and do it together, and then in our last chapter we used if, and throughout we've been using count. All of these are control structures. There are different types of control structures. You can usually find them at the bottom of Alice, in the section down here that looks like this. Now there are one type of control structure that has to do with the timing. When do we do all of our instructions? There's the do in order, which is sequential, and the do together, with, which is simultaneous. In our last chapter, you learned about conditional control structures. We used the if statement block, and we used it in a variety of ways, such as events, and also in our procedures to control which section of code we did. We've also done some repetition using the count statement block. We're going to use more of that in this chapter, and we're also going to learn about the while later on in this chapter. So what is repetition? In programming, Repetition means that you're going to repeat a series of instructions several times. Take a look at this first example. This is going to make the bunny hop eight times. And notice that in order to repeat this step, I actually dragged over the tile hop eight times. But there is a built-in control structure that helps you with the repetition without having to drag it this many times. It will allow you to repeat without adding the code. And here is the second example using the count. So instead of adding the hop eight times, I count eight with just doing the hop once. So this is much more efficient and it's easy to read and understand what's happening in my code when I use this kind of control structure. Now the count control structure can do a little bit more than what we've used it for. It is a definite loop. What does that mean? A definite loop is one that knows in advance exactly how many times it will run. It's not going to change its mind in the middle of execution. It decides before it starts how many times it's going to run, and it will do exactly that. Now the number to count up to must be a whole number. If you take a look here where the arrow is pointing. When you count, you count with whole numbers. One, two, three, four. You don't count with fractions or decimals. And it's the same thing in programming. So this number has to be a whole number. But you can use a function as long as you change that number to a whole number. You can also have a count inside a count. So you can have a loop inside a loop. It's called nesting. And you can use a random number as long as that random number is a whole number. We're going to be doing all of these things in our programming example for this lesson. Our lesson one program is called the Bunny Adventure Program. It's been started for you. So first you want to start Alice and then open the Chapter 5 Lesson 1 Bunny Adventure Program from the backpack. You're going to add your name and date in the comment block at the top and save the program in your student account. So you can go ahead and pause this video and make sure that you go ahead and start those steps. Once you do, you will notice that one procedure has already been done for you, the hop procedure for the bunny. So I encourage you to open or edit the procedure and look over the code so you can understand how the bunny is expected to hop. During this lesson, you're going to add three more biped procedures to the program, and you're going to add three events to the code. When you're finished, you're going to save the program and put it in the backpack for a grade. Here's the Bunny Adventure program. Hopefully you've already added your name and date to the comment block and saved it into your student account. Let's take a look at the hop procedure. It's right here. If I click on Edit, you can see that I've got a Do Together. So I'm using some control structures right in here. I'm going to have the, the bunny move up and forward and down and forward. So it's going to move up and down. I have adjusted the, the amount of hopping up and forward and also the duration. So it's a really quick hop. Otherwise, it would take a long time to get anything accomplished. So this has already been done for you. We're going to call hop in a loop so that he will hop to something. Now we're going to add a biped procedure to make the bunny hop to something. Here are the requirements for procedure number one. We're going to call it destination and we're going to create it at the biped level. We will use a parameter for what to hop to. This parameter will be S model because sometimes I'm going to hop to another biped and sometimes I'm going to hop to a prop. So if I use S model, it will work for any object. 
In my code, I'm going to do a turn to face. I'm going to hop to what using a function. So we're going to turn, learn how to make this function to a whole number and use it in my count. Let's get started. I'm going to click on biped so I can add my procedure. Hopefully you already know how to do this. And I'm going to call it destination. If you recall back from my very first chapter, all of your procedure names should be lowercase. You should not start with a capital letter. So kind of be careful about that. That's a good technique to get into when you're programming in any language is that we use a lot of lowercase letters. We reserve uppercase letters for a special reason. So I've got my destination procedure and I'm going to add my parameter. I'm going to call it what because what is the bunny going to hop to? And remember that we're going to make it an S model. So I'm going to pick this one right here. Now I have my procedure and the first thing I want to do is turn to face whatever I'm going to be hopping to. So let's find turn to face and the target is going to be what? Now I'm going to add in my count and right now I'm just going to pick any number. It's my placeholder and I can change it to whatever I want. And what I'm going to do is hop. So if I come back up here to the top, I'll see that my hop procedure is right here. I'm going to drag it inside. So right now it's going to hop two times. But really what I want it to do is hop to whatever I select. So sometimes it's going to hop to grass, sometimes it's going to hop to another bunny. And I need to find the distance to that object. I'm going to come here to functions and I'm going to go to get distance to and if I come up here see how it doesn't let me drop it in there that's because this is a decimal and remember we learned that whatever number is here has to be a whole number so I've got some options let's click on my triangle my drop down menu and I'm coming here one of my choices right here is to change a decimal to a whole number and you really got three different ways to do it they're all very similar with just slight differences. We're going to use this middle one, the two rounded integer. And then once again, just pick anything. It's going to be my placeholder. So it doesn't matter what I'm rounding to. I'm going to put the function right here. But I had to do this first. It had to be able to change a decimal to an, a whole number. Now when I come back here to get distance to, it allows me to drop it right in here where the decimal number is. And I can pick my parameter what. So I've just created my func my procedure with a count using a get a function that I changed to a whole number and I'm going to hop that many times. Let's just test it. Remember what we're going to do incremental development. I'm not going to keep this call in my first method. Let's just do it right now so I can test it. So I'm going to click on my bunny, back on my procedures, and here's hop. I already know that hop works. Let's try destination. I'm going to do my destination to the grass. And there he goes. I can change this destination to the march hare. And there he goes. So I'm doing my incremental development and in then I just tested this procedure more than once with some different objects to make sure it works. Now I can trash it. I don't really need it anymore, but I did want to make sure that it worked. So just as a recap, our procedure should look something like this. You can check your code and make sure that you've got it fairly accurate. For procedure number two, we're going to call it make square and we're going to use a loop inside a loop. Now a square has four sides, so the outside loop will count to four. The bunny will hop two times for each side, so the inside loop will count two for each hop. In our code, we're going to do this. We're going to use a count of four. We're going to turn left a quarter turn because the square is going to go 90 degrees. We're going to count two, and inside we're going to hop. Let's give it a try. I'm back here with my biped. Let's create another procedure. I'm going to call it make square. And remember that we're using lowercase. But for my second word, I can use a capital letter there to make it look like two words. I don't really need a parameter for this because the bunny's not going to be interacting with anything. So I'm going to start with my count. This is for the, the square and I want it to go four times because the square has four sides. So I'm going to use a custom whole number. I'm just going to type four. 
Now I wanted to do a quarter turn because I need to go four sides and I'm turning 90 degrees each time. So let's do a turn. And I'm just going to choose to turn left. You could do right. I'm going to turn left and I'm going to do a quarter turn. Okay. Then I'm going to use another count and I'm going to hop two times. So I'm going to use the number two and I'm going to call hop. And if I want to, I can just adjust it so it'll go a little bit faster. So I can change my duration just a little bit, maybe. And I want to test this. So we're going to do incremental development in my first method. I want to try just the make square. Let's see if he does make a square. All right, it's working really good. So I can trash this now. I know that this one works. So let's just recap for make square. Your code should look something like this. So take a look. Make sure that you've got it fairly accurate. Now for procedure number three, we're going to make the march hair, which is like the father. We're going to make him tap his foot. This time we're going to use a random number. And what we need to do is have the right foot move up and down. We're going to repeat this in a loop using a random number. And we're going to use a biped parameter for who because we're also going to have him turn to face whoever he's tapping the foot for. So in our code, we're going to turn to face, who, count to a random number, and then we're going to turn the right foot backward and then forward just a little bit for the tapping motion. I'm also going to change the duration. Okay, so let's give it a try. I'm going to click on biped and create another procedure. We're going to call it tap foot. And I want the father to turn to face the bunny before he taps his foot. So we do need a parameter. I can just make it biped if I want to because it's only going to be for the, the bunny. I'm going to call it who. So I've got my parameter. I'm ready for him to turn to face. Who. And then I'm going to use my count. I do want a random number. I'm just going to put any number right now. That's my placeholder. I can change it. And what is he going to do here? He's going to move his foot. So let's come over here to this section right here that lets me get the subparts for this. And I want the foot. So I'm going to come all the way over here. And I see right foot. So you could use right foot or left foot. I'm just going to use the right foot. And it's going to turn backwards just a little bit and then it's going to turn forward just a little bit and I'm going to change the duration because otherwise it'll just take a really long time so I've got the tapping motion right here backward forward backward forward and right now it's going to do it two times well I want it to be random so every time he taps his foot a little bit different let's click here and you're going to see your choices and one of them is random all three of these would work there's not a lot of difference. This one starts at zero. This one starts at whatever numbers you want. This one does not include the last one, and this one includes it. So I'm going to use this last one. I just think it's easiest. And you can pick any two numbers. They're just placeholders, and I can change them. So right now, it's a random number from one to one. That's not very interesting. Let's make the lowest number be two. So he has to tap his foot at least two times. And I'm going to have it go up to six. But you can pick whatever number you want. Now remember, it has to be whole. So I'm going to click here on custom whole number and I'm going to choose six. So he will do a random tap between two or six. Two, three, four, five, or six. That will be our choice. Let's give this a try. So I'm going to do incremental development by going to my first method and trying out this tap. I'm going to, the bunny's right here. Actually, we'll just move him out a little bit. And here's tap foot. He's going to turn to face the bunny, so I click right there, and let's see. Now I'm going to run it again. Every time I run it, he might tap his foot a different number of times. So the first time was two, that time was six, and that time was three. So it looks like everything is working correctly. So now I can trash this. I've done my incremental development. I know that all three procedures are working correctly. 
Okay, now here's what your code should look like for tap foot. Hopefully you've already got it correct. Now the first event we're going to add is just this add de default model manipulation so I can move the characters around. You should have done this many times already. You find it under mouse. I'm going to click here on e initialize event listeners. Here's our add event listener. I'm just going to click here, go to mouse, and it's the last one. So I've just added that section. So that was the easy event. Now we're going to add two more mouse click events, one for the bunny and one for the march hare. When I click on the bunny, I want him to go to the savanna grass and then make a square. I'll be able to move the grass around so it could get interesting. When I click on the march hare, the dad, I want him to tap his foot and then the bunny is going to go to the march hare. So you need to program, remember when you're doing a mouse click that you need to use this equals equals. And one side is going to be what you're clicking on, and the other is always going to be that procedure, the parameter event at get model at mouse location. So go ahead and get these events completed. I click on mouse, and on the first one, click on object listener. I have to drag up my if statement. I always pick true. I'm going to change this. I'm going to come down here to relational s theme. I've got my equals equals. Pick any two things. These are your placeholders. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to do this one for bunny. So my first thing is going to be bunny. And I always drag this event over. So that's going to be my second one. Now I'm ready to call the procedures for bunny. So the first thing I want him to do is go to the grass. And then I want him to make a square. Okay. So I'm going to do those two. Let's do the next one for March Hare. I'm going to add in another mouse click. I'm going to drag up another if statement. Always pick true. I'm going to change this to the relational s thing. It equals equals. Pick any two things. I can't pick March Hare. But remember, the second one should always be this parameter event. What do I want to happen when the March Hare gets clicked on? I want him to tap his foot for the bunny. And then I want the bunny to go to the March Hare. It would be pretty much like that. Now when I test it, first of all, I should be able to move the grass. I should be able to move the tree. I can move the dad. I can move any of these objects. I'm going to click on the bunny. He should go to the grass and then make a square. And if I click on the dad, he should tap his foot and the bunny should go to him. And I should be able to repeat this in any order, and it should always work perfectly. So make sure that your my first method does not have any code in it. You only use that for incremental development. You're going to test the code by clicking on the bunny and the march hare in any order, multiple times, and moving the objects. When everything is working correctly, save your program and turn it in the backpack for a grade. We just finished lesson one for chapter five.